Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on performing an ANOVA using SPSS. I'm here now looking at the data view of some data that I created. This is fictitious data just for the purposes of this demonstration. I'm going to start by explaining the research design used to collect this data or that would be used to collect this data if it were real. I'm going to perform ANOVA and show you the steps uh, in that process and then take a look at the results and show you how to interpret those results. So for the purposes of this video, let's assume that you work at a mental health agency and you're running an experiment and you have one dependent variable that you're tracking, uh, that you're observing as part of this experiment. And I have that labeled here overall functioning. And let's assume that uh, this overall functioning scale or whatever instrument you're using to determine uh, overall functioning uh, that the values are converted to t-scores, which mean, means there's a mean of 50, right? so that the scores have a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10, and that a higher score on the overall functioning uh, assessment means lower functioning. So you could think of this assessment as measuring the number, frequency, and duration, the quantity, frequency, of duration of symptoms. Therefore, the higher the score, the more symptoms, and the lower the functioning. Conversely, of course, the lower the score would represent fewer symptoms and a higher level of functioning. So what we hope when we uh, apply the treatments uh, available in, in, in this or, or featured in this study that we're going to get a lower score on overall functioning. So let's take a look at the different independent variables. So overall functioning is a dependent variable. And then we have two independent variables. One is duration. So let's, let's assume that the treatment being provided to these participants is group therapy. OK, so the duration of this uh, group is six weeks and there's another duration of 12 weeks so there's two levels of this factor there's a six week level and a 12 week level and this goes across all uh, 90 participants uh, half are in a six week group and half are in a 12 week group so that's one factor. Then we have another factor. And this factor is the emphasis of the group. So remember, the overall functioning is the only dependent variable that we have, which is one, independent vari or one dependent variable. But the emphasis of the group is an independent variable because it's the, it's the focus of the particular group therapy. So there's three levels of this independent variable. There's substance use, so this would be a substance use focused group. Uh, depression, that would be the primary topic of this group. And trauma, this would be a trauma focused group. So this design would be referred to as a two by three design. So a two by three design would have two independent variables, one with two levels, which is duration in this case, and one with three levels, which is emphasis, with two by three design. So what we want to know is we want to detect, we want to be able to detect a difference in the six week group versus the 12 week. We want to see if there's really a difference there. And we want to see if there's a difference by emphasis, meaning is there a difference between the substance use focused 
and depression-focused and trauma-focused groups. And then furthermore, we want to see if there's what's called an interaction effect, meaning a combination of duration and emphasis that result in a statistically significant difference. So let's perform the analysis. We have, uh, we'll click on uh, Analyze, and we want the general linear model and univariate. Right, so this is uh, an ANOVA. And remember, we, we talked about the dependent variable is <coughs> overall functioning. So we would either drag that over here, or we can select it and click the arrow. Either way. And the fixed factors, which are the, the independent variables, would be group and emphasis. Now I'm going to add here uh, a plot as well. I'm going to add a plot where the horizontal axis is duration. And what they have is separate lines is emphasis. I'm going to add that uh, as a plot that will come out in the results. And click OK. And you can see that uh, a good deal of information is produced uh, by SPSS, uh, the results of SANOVA, uh, three, <coughs> well, two tables and a graph. So you can see in the first uh, table, you have the sample size for each of the levels in this group. So you have 45 and 45 for the duration, and you have 30, 30, and 30 for substance use, depression, and trauma-focused groups. So these are really uh, just descriptives, uh, descriptive statistics. Then we look here at tests of between subjects effects. This is really uh, the uh, this is really what we look to or think of uh, when we are considering the results of the ANOVA. So we want to look at duration first. So this was either the 6-week or the 12-week. We want to know is there a statistically significant difference between how the participants scored in the 6-week duration group and the 12-week duration group. And the most important figure here for, the, for our purposes is uh, the p-value, which uh, is referred to as significance level here in SPSS. And you can see it's 0 0.011, which means there's a 1.1% chance that the difference that was observed between the two groups, the duration groups, occurred by uh, random error, through random error alone. So 1.1% chance that those results occurred by random error. In the social sciences, uh, typically, uh, we set the alpha at 0 0.05, uh, or 5%. So in this case, we would reject the null hypothesis because uh, the p-value is 0 0.011, and our, and our uh, alpha is set at 0 0.05. So we would reject the null hypothesis. So we're going to say here that there is a true difference uh, between uh, the groups. It's not due to random error. Now let's look at emphasis. Remember that's substance use, depression, and trauma-focused groups. So is there a difference by emphasis? And you can see here that there is. The significance level is 0.004 or 0.4 percent, uh, well under the 0.05 or 5 percent alpha. So there's a statistically significant difference for both duration and emphasis. But what about the interaction of the two variables? what Excel calls duration times emphasis. And you can see the, the significance level here is 0 0.857, 85%. So here we would accept the null hypothesis. So there is no interaction effect. There's a main effect for duration, a main effect for emphasis, 
but the interaction effect is not significant. All right, so statistically significant result for duration emphasis, but not for duration times emphasis. That's how you interpret this table. And then the only other output that uh, I asked for from SPSS that I entered into the dialog was this um, plot. And this has uh, three lines. Here the top one is trauma, the middle one is depression, and the bottom one is substance use. And then down at the bottom, uh, you have the six week and 12 week. And you can see uh, without any, uh, well, there, there are, uh, there's a quantitative measure here on, um, on the y axis. But without even really looking uh, necessarily at the, uh, or paying close attention to the numbers, you can see there is a decrease uh, across the different duration for all three uh, types of group. Uh, it is important, however, uh, you can look at it initially and see there's a decrease, but it is important to look at the quantitative information because uh, the way this uh, graph is generated uh, is based on the high and low values. So even though this is a uh, significant drop uh, from 52 and a half, uh, and this looks like it's below 50 here, and all of these had significant drops from the six week to the 12 week, uh, the way SPSS generates these plots, uh, there could be, this could represent just a half a point, and, and you would still see these drops. So you really do have to pay attention to how much uh, decrease or change you're seeing uh, in these different plots. But just a quick look will tell you there, there was a decrease of some type. So that's how to interpret uh, the results of an ANOVA. Uh, as always, uh, I want to thank you for watching my video, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me, and I'll be happy to help you.